Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. I'm Pam Kennedy, research analyst with the East Asia program at Stimson Center. Thank you for joining us virtually today for a discussion of how COVID-19 has impacted the policy priorities of the United States, Taiwan, and Japan, and how international cooperation can adapt to better face this pandemic environment. Before I introduce our speakers and they begin their remarks, a couple housekeeping notes for the audience on using WebEx. First, this webinar is being recorded and it will be posted on the Stimson website after the event. Second, we will give the panelists each 10 minutes to speak and then we'll move to a question and answer session. If you have a question, please submit it through the Q&A box that you should see on the lower right side of your screen. Please specify if you have a question for a specific speaker and I will read the questions and let our speakers answer aloud. So it's my privilege to briefly introduce our speakers and you can see their full bios on our website. First, bringing the public health perspective to this issue is Dr. Zhang Zhongxuan, the Dean of National Taiwan University's College of Public Health since 2017. Next, Dr. Yasuhiro Matsuda is a professor of international politics at the University of Tokyo's Institute for Advanced Studies on Asia. And finally, last but not least, Ms. Shirley Khan, an independent specialist on Asian security affairs, previously with the Congressional Research Service. Dr. John, would you please start us off? In this uh, uh, webinar, uh, I was asked to talk about why uh, health diplomacy is so uh, important now in Taiwan in this uh, uh, recent years. You know, Taiwan has been isolated by international society for a long time after we uh, were out of United Nations back in 1970s. So uh, the whole society has a big drive to be uh, international. And as we say that uh, diplomacy is, you know, uh, extension of internal affairs. So as the people's, uh, uh, wish and demands increase over years. And we have to look for uh, some possibility that we are able to participate in. And World Health Organization or Global Health, uh, one is an institution, one is a big issue that our society think is very important. And as you may know that uh, uh, Medicine is, uh, or medical professionals in Taiwan society is an elite. Uh, during the Japanese colonies and uh, our the brightest people cannot learn uh, like politics or international uh, relationships. Uh, most of us, uh, our uh, uh, bright uh, citizens uh, study medicines. So, uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of them will later become uh, novelists, politicians, you know, statesmen. So it has been a long history of um, uh, medical professionals are very engaged in uh, public affairs. So this is a long history. And, and so that's uh, uh, the background that Taiwan uh, uh, in this uh, particular time uh, for COVID-19. You can see there's a lot of uh, activities going on, mostly from uh, civil society, actually. So in the past 20 years, Taiwan uh, Medical Society has been very active in uh, uh, going around the world, working with uh, World Medical Associations, Public Health Societies, and uh, to uh, promote Taiwan to be a part of WHO or be uh, participating in WHA. And this is, um, and this COVID-19 actually uh, gave us uh, an opportunity to show actually Taiwan's uh, uh, public health systems or response to um, a pandemic is, you know, uh, better than many countries and the way we took uh, the measures we have can be a good uh, reference to many countries to, to uh, control the pandemic. So this give us a legitimacy to, to promote the Taiwan model would be a very good model for not just uh, each Asian countries and probably for the whole world. 
And the reason our uh, control so far is relatively successful is that we learned the hard lessons from 2003 SARS outbreak in Taiwan. And that outbreak killed physicians and nurses in hospitals, and we closed down two hospitals that time. So wh what we learned that time, we, we know we cannot expect to have timely and correct information from China when there is something going on in China. So we are very alert, and we uh, took uh, precautionary steps to implement public health measures. The first one is border control. So we have the border control earlier than anyone and uh, earlier than any epidemic curve has started. So we, we, we board it, the airplane from Wuhan to check the fevers. Later on, we ban their entries uh, from Wuhan, from Hubei province, then later the whole, the whole China. I think those uh, actions, decisive actions are very important for Taiwan's uh, success it, to limit uh, imported case as, as many as possible. And it works. Then later on, we have these uh, public health measures, uh, many of them like uh, social distancing, wearing masks, you know, and uh, we are the first country which has a panic buying of masks. So we are uh, implementing a lot of, um, you know, uh, smarter ways to ration the masks buying and to ramp up the production of, to meet the domestic needs for masks. And all this uh, is so, so smoothly and uh, because because we are democracy. And um, the year before this, 2019, you know, the Hong Kong up, you know, democracy uh, movement uh, has a big impact on Taiwan. And at that time, Taiwan was a divided society. The two political parties are fighting um, fiercely. But Hong Kong's instance, you know, over the almost nine months, mobilized the that the whole society and uh, become more unified. So there's a slogan, today's Hong Kong, tomorrow's Taiwan, you know. So that's actually uh, move out from divided society to a more unified society. And the presidential elections, by electing uh, President Tsai Ing-wen with the majorities, both in uh, presidential elections and uh, our legislations. So this uh, solidifies our society as unified society in a democratic uh, system. That means we can trust our government. And the people's trust on government is so high, then any public health measures the governments proclaim, our citizens obey very uh, obediently. Give you an example, you know, when we ration two masks per week, to be uh, purchased from the pharmacies. You know, just a long queue. People wait two hours just to buy two pieces of masks and no riot, you know, no complaint. So that's uh, the kind of trust you can see that because we, we are not divided uh, society in many uh, democracy right now. So it's, it's very easy. And the other way is the government is very transparent. So every day we have one press press release, and we set up a command centers, and they always brief people what's going on daily. So by giving out information, then uh, people become more and more, uh, uh, you know, uh, sure, and the, 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 the anxiety of pandemic reduce a lot. Okay, so uh, that trust and transparency is very important. So this is uh, uh, Taiwan's models. And the reason Taiwan, you know, had this uh, uh, cooperation with US and Japan is also quite nature's. You know, all the medical educations or educational uh, system were set up by J Japan when they were uh, ruling Taiwan. And I think this system is very, uh, very, very good. And in our universities, for example, we are one of the 
uh, 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 university during the Japanese time, something like uh, Tokyo University, Kyoto University, also, uh, et cetera. And a lot of our professors have the generations cooperation with the Japanese scholars. It's, it spans three generations now. Even today, I have so many Japanese friends who are working together. And after World War II, we have been strongly influenced by American systems. So uh, our uh, educational system is kind of branding of Japanese and uh, Americans. So we have many uh, counterparts in the uh, US, like in, in my college. Like 70% uh, of our faculty has degree mostly from US university, and some of them are from UK. So that's a, a, a kind of a close relations we have. So, uh, the, you know, if you want to talk about corporations, you have to have a people and people know each other. So it's so easy to, to communicate to each others. So that let us to become a kind of a community we can uh, uh, discuss the same issues we are facing and uh, uh, try to promote uh, the same uh, values we believe, like democracy, human rights, and, and health for all. Health is a human right. All these kind of things. And not to mention that uh, professional knowledge that uh, uh, Japan and uh, uh, US are currently leading the world in a lot of medical uh, affairs or the public health uh, measures. So uh, by this, it's so uh, natural. I told you, it's so natural to be uh, cooperate with Japan and US from uh, Taiwan's perspective. And, uh, and my friends from Japan and, and US also uh, think that Taiwan you know, it's a very unique Chinese society where it's a really a true democracy. So everything we, we, we are doing, I think it's very good for others at Chinese society to, to learn, uh, to see. And so in this um, uh, pandemic control, I think Taiwan model show that uh, there's a Chinese, China models is very authoritarian, very uh, if efficient in one way, but uh, Taiwan models, you know, we are still, we're controlling very well, but everything is, is in a democratic ways and uh, and by laws and by uh, uh, vigilance of the people and government and also willingness to cooperate with governments from the citizens. So I think this kind of a spirit, this kind of models uh, uh, really is uh, something that the whole world is worthwhile to learn a, a little bit. That's my... Uh, First, uh, sharing with you and the Taiwan pre uh, experience of controlling pandemic until June. And there's still a long way to go. We know this is kind of first eating and we're okay, we are safe now, but uh, because the virus is very difficult to, to deal with, we know that. So uh, we're still, still very watchful. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. John. That's very insightful. Um, I will ask. Dr. Matsuda from Japan to speak next. Good, uh, good morning. I'm Yasuhiro Matsuda. I'm uh, conducting research on uh, the uh, international politics in East Asia, especially focusing on the cross, the cross trade relationship. And uh, I'm not an expert of public health, I'm a political scientist. But now, uh, you know, everything is related to everything. You know, the meaning of pandemic means all are infectious to the all. So I feel like that this is a situation of academic pandemic. You know, and so today I let me talk about the relationship between epidemic and domestic and regional politics. Um, the major questions are uh, like this, how the pandemic is affecting the relationship between Japan and Taiwan. Have uh, relations deepened since January, or what is the trajectory now? Is the pandemic an opportunity for cooperation, or uh, does it make meaningful partnership more difficult? Well, um, I, uh, uh, like uh, Dr. Tan said, you know, Taiwan has made a, a, a remarkable uh, achievement uh, to uh, 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 to deal with uh, the COVID-19. Taiwan's total number of confirmed cases are only 443, 
uh, including domestic confirmed cases, only 55, and there are only uh, seven uh, uh, deaths. And uh, the new confirmed cases are zero uh, uh, in the past 54 days in a row. So this is an incredibly remarkable uh, you know, achievement. Uh, so, you know, uh, in Japan, uh, image of Taiwan has greatly improved in the past uh, several months. And uh, especially, uh, you know, uh, in April, uh, uh, when Japan was in a very uh, a serious situation, uh, Taiwan supported Japan, uh, you know, very much. Uh, uh, Taiwan uh, 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 presented uh, uh, pro uh, protective overall overalls and high quality ma face masks and so on. So a uh, friend in need is a friend indeed. The Japanese uh, truly appreciate uh, Taiwanese, you know, friendship and uh, great, uh, uh, you know, support. And uh, uh, the Japanese, uh, uh, the, the Japanese government also, uh, uh, you know, cooperated with the Taiwanese government for evacuating each other's nationals. For example, Taiwan's chartered flights from Peru uh, carried. Uh, the, ja the Japanese citizen and uh, the Japanese chartered flights uh, 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 to India also carried Taiwanese nationals. And uh, uh, Prime Minister Abe and President Chai, uh, Tsai uh, tweet tweeted each other and uh, hooray Japan, hooray Taiwan. And this is a very beautiful situation. But uh, that's a Japanese point of view. I think that from the Taiwanese point of view, there are, uh, it's not a ser serious though, but there are multiple uh, kind of uh, disappointments toward uh, Japan. For example, uh, Japan Japan's policies uh, for preventing epidemics are uh, too little, too late, and uh, with no forceful measures. So uh, a lot of news uh, coming from uh, Japan, uh, you know, uh, disappointed a lot of uh, Taiwanese. And also, uh, the Japanese government were uh, was uh, too much uh, preoccupied by the. Uh, the President Xi Jinping's, Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit to Japan. It postponed it though, uh, but uh, the Japanese government uh, cared uh, too much about uh, China and also, and also cared too much about uh, uh, the uh, Olympic and Paralympic Games. Uh, so the, the policies of prevention of epidemics uh, didn't go well. So that's the the uh, you know the the typical image of Japan in Taiwan, and uh, although ja the Japanese government has uh, you know supported Taiwan's uh, participation to WHA and other WHO related uh, uh, you know activities, uh, the Japanese you know uh, posture was not strong enough, and especially and uh, Japan uh, began to consider. The loosening the the border control against uh, uh, other nations, uh, but the first round of the nations are Thailand, Vietnam, uh, uh, New Zealand, and uh, Australia. But Taiwan is not included. I think that there are a lot of you know uh, you know small disappointments are uh, piling up in Taiwan. Um, but there is a uh, good news uh, for Taiwan uh, as well. That, that's the, the approval rating of uh, Tsai Ing-wen administration is very, very high. Uh, it hit the highest uh, in, in the history of Tsai Ing-wen's uh, government. So if uh, the government is strong enough, uh, you know, the, the Taiwan's government can make a difficult decision such as, lift, such as lifting the ban of uh, food import. Uh, and th this is a kind of a uh, uh, from, from Japan, this is a kind of a, the key uh, issue uh, to participate into uh, CPTPP. Uh, Japan is a, a key actor uh, of CPTPP. But I think that it, uh, we should wait for a, a little while to think about uh, trade and investment. On the other hand, other hand if we look at uh, Japan's domestic politics, I think that uh, the situation is uh, much worse. You know, the, there is a success uh, in Taiwan and the approval rating of Tsai Ing-wen administration is very high. But on the other hand, Japan is totally a uh, different story. Uh, the total number of confirmed cases are uh, uh, 17,000 uh, and so. The death toll is uh, 907 
And uh, the new confirmed cases are 48 uh, yesterday. And uh, we are suffering a, a huge economic downturn. So uh, the Japanese government has just uh, passed the $1.1 trillion stimulus package uh, just last, last week. And it means that uh, already a serious uh, financial deficit will become even worse. I'm really uh, personally also very worried about the uh, Japanese financial situation. And uh, compared to uh, the United States and other European nations, uh, Japan is counted as a, a successful uh, case. But if, if we compare to, uh, to the a great success of Taiwan, uh, the Japanese uh, case is uh, not successful enough. So uh, what could be the implications to the Japanese uh, foreign policies? Um, I think that uh, uh, basically the Japanese uh, foreign policies uh, are uh, influenced by the great power relationships such as China US relationship or the, uh, the uh, future result of the uh, US presidential election. So the basically those you know great power relationship or, or the Sino or, uh, I mean uh, the Sino uh, Japanese relations. Uh, recently, that uh, uh, Xi Jinping President Xi Jinping has a visit to Japan. Uh, you know it, it, it seems like that his visit is planned to uh, the November November of uh, 2020, right after the G20 summit. Um, uh, I think that this is uh, the the uh, uh, not a bad timing uh, for Japan because uh, China U.S. relationship before uh, the president election uh, presidential election of the United States uh, will be uh, worse and worse. So it should be arranged after the presidential election. But if the government uh, changes, I think that new government will start in next January. So uh, before that. Uh, uh, is the, the best timing. So this is the best timing uh, for a Xi Jinping's visit, but there is a big worry that if, uh, for example, if uh, Mr. Xi Jinping makes a speech like what he did in the uh, WHA, you know, praising China uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I think that this is a, a little bit different, uh, you know, uh, uh, psychology. Uh, you know, inside China and the, the rest of the world. So if if his performance is uh, not good in Japan, I think that the uh, the Sino-Japanese relation may uh, e become even worse. Uh, if we, so for example, if we take a look at uh, Chan Zemin's visit in 1998, you know, the relations became worse after uh, his visit. So the both nations should be very very careful about this. So actually, the uh, Taiwan is not actually not in the radar screen of uh, Japan's foreign policy uh, so far. So um, uh, so our uh, discussion is quite limited to the bilateral you know, uh, relations. But there is a very bad news for the uh, Japan-Taiwan relations. That's uh, the, uh, you know, the, uh, the situation of Abe administration. Uh, Abe administration's approval rating is very low, uh, you know, because of its you know, uh, fumbling of the uh, policies uh, against, fighting against the COVID-19. And there are some uh, other scandals. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the achievement of abenomics uh, has uh, disappeared. And uh, the only uh, the side effect left. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, the government has decided to uh, uh, give uh, face masks to all the uh, the uh, Japanese nationals and the residents, uh, but you know this uh, policy has not gone uh, well. Uh, I haven't received yet, uh, so uh, uh, this is called abeno mask. Now both abeno mix mix and abeno mask uh, are not going well. So uh, it means that very this is very very negative to uh, you know Japan Taiwan relation. Uh, because uh, uh, Prime Minister Abe is very famous for its uh, pro-Taiwan, strong pro-Taiwan, uh, you know, stance. And uh, he is uh, becoming a kind of lame duck. Uh, fourth term uh, is almost impossible. So uh, based on the current epidemic, you know, uh, the dissolution 
of the House of Representatives is also uh, impossible. And uh, 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 constitutional uh, amendment is also uh, impossible. So uh, Prime Minister Abe has 60 months uh, left. So it means that uh, the post Abe competition has already uh, started. So it's it's not good for all the, uh, the the Japan Taiwan relations. So my conclusion so far uh, is that uh, control the situation, epidemic situation in Japan first, then resume uh, people to people you know uh, visit and uh, uh, doing more exchanges uh, of experiences and knowledge about how to fight COVID-19. You know, Taiwan is a very good, uh, you know, uh, teacher uh, for, for the rest of the world. So I think that these are uh, the, the uh, thing I, I can imagine so far. I don't think that the new breakthrough between the two, uh, you know, uh, uh, between the two is, uh, I, I don't think that, uh, that's uh, quite, in, uh, quite possible. You know, uh, I, I'm a, uh, I may be a little bit pessimistic, but I, 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 I'm a little bit, uh, uh, you know, uh, realistic about uh, the, uh, uh, the bilateral relations. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Matsuda. Ms. Khan? Yes, hi. Good to see everyone. Thank you for um, tuning in. So I'm gonna speak about the US perspective and how the United States has responded. And particularly, the United States has really appreciated Taiwan's handling of the coronavirus and responded with an even stronger partnership with Taiwan. Now the question is, has there been paradigm change in our overall policy on Taiwan? So as of today, Taiwan has 443 confirmed cases and seven deaths. As of today, Taiwan has reported no domestic cases for 54 consecutive days. In terms of fatality rates, um, compared to, say, Italy at 14.3%, the United States at 5.8%, Taiwan has a low rate of only 1.6%. Now, why has the United States appreciated Taiwan's handling? the COVID-19 pandemic. We have some lessons that we've learned. One, despite Taiwan's proximity to China, Taiwan has had a relatively successful handling of the situation. This achievement is even more remarkable when you think about two other factors. One, is the very extensive exchanges across the Taiwan Strait. And secondly, Taiwan's exclusion from the WHO. Now, President Tsai has led Taiwan to deal proactively and decisively to deal with the situation. Earning her country the praise of Taiwan model. What does that mean? That means that Taiwan has been able to use the power of truth, transparency, and timely communication in order to mitigate the problem. More importantly than all of these factors, it's something that we often don't see in Taiwan, and that is Taiwan has used a whole of government approach to deal with this problem. So, President Tsai can and should be able to apply the same whole of government approach to other policies, especially in national defense and economic growth. There have been stark differences between a democratic Taiwan that cares about the world in counter to China ruled under the Communist Party of China, CPC, that cares only about its power and image. So, Taiwan basically has generated very important goodwill that it should be able to sustain in other aspects of its domestic and foreign policies for its own survival and self-defense. Now, what has been the U.S. response? 
what have been the effects on our priorities and our policies. First, I want to talk about the context of strategic competition with China. Regarding competition, on the anniversary of the May 4th movement about a month ago, Deputy National Security Advisor Matt Pottinger gave a speech in which he talked about Taiwan's democracy, especially as a counter to China's attacks on democracy. Clarity. 31 years ago today, some of us watched with horror as the People's Liberation Army cracked heads in Beijing around Tiananmen Square. If there's any doubt today about China's dangers, there should no more, there should be clarity today about what the dangers of a world dominated by China would look like in what it calls a community of common destiny. Third, coordination. Now more than ever, we see the significance of a US-led world order and even stronger network of alliances like with Japan and partnerships like with Taiwan. Now, secondly, the US responded very, very strongly with a diplomatic campaign to support Taiwan's inclusion in the World Health Organization, specifically its meeting last month at the WHA. So in late April, despite a gap of six years without a cabinet rank visit to Taiwan, our Secretary of Health and Human Services held a teleconference with Taiwan's Minister of Health. And then on May 1st, the State Department carried out a very strong coordinated campaign primarily on Twitter to support Taiwan's inclusion in the WHA. Even Secretary of State Michael Pompeo spoke publicly in support of Taiwan's inclusion at the WHA. The bipartisan leaders of the House Foreign Affairs and Senate Foreign Relations Committees sent a letter to almost 60 countries in support of Taiwan's inclusion at the WHA. The Senate passed a bill to support the same objective. Thus, the United States showed leadership and the campaign gained the support of other democratic countries such as Australia, Japan, and New Zealand. Now, how has this cooperation evolved? We have seen greater, uh, closer, and higher level and more direct interaction between the United States and Taiwan. In other words, not just through the American Institute in Taiwan. And we have shifted away from using international institutions that might have been co-opted by the CPC in China to our own bilateral platforms. What do I mean by that? We have set up five years ago a bilateral platform called the Global Cooperation and Training Framework, GCTF. Secondly, this, ex this framework has expanded from bilateral cooperation to multilateral partnerships. Just on April 28th, the officials from the United States, Taiwan, and Japan attended a virtual GCTF workshop on how to fight disinformation about, about um, COVID-19. And then just on June 1st, just on Monday, the United States, Taiwan, and Japan issued a joint statement to mark the fifth anniversary of the GCTF. Now, what have been the reasons for this? One, the administration in the United States views Taiwan as important in its own right. Taiwan is, has its own importance separate from China. In other words, our policy is no longer China-centric in dealing with the Indo-Pacific. Secondly, I have um, Taiwan is an important asset in our coalition on democratic countries. And third, substantively and symbolically, 
The United States is signaling in strategic communication our continued commitment to allies and partners in the Indo-Pacific. In other words, China should not get the wrong idea. This support for our allies and partners has staunch bilateral, bi bipartisan support in the Congress and the administration. Now, what are my concerns? I have concerns that there could be misinterpretations and misunderstandings about this U.S. response and the incremental changes that are important in U.S. policy. This situation is not about containment, a conflict, cold war, confrontation, a consequence or punishment against China or the WHO. It is true that contrary to the previous administration, this administration is not afraid of friction with China. Secondly, I do not see a paradigm change in our policy on Taiwan. In other words, what's commonly called our on China policy. Nevertheless, we are less rigid about our restrictions on bilateral contact and the words and language that we use. For example, we don't have to be, we don't have to restrict ourselves from using the word Taiwanese when we talk about the people instead of using the previous word of the Taiwans. The Taiwans was politically correct, but it was really grammatically incorrect. And in our campaign to support Taiwan in the WHA, we have not really hit at the fundamental problem. That is China's lies at the United Nations and the international community about UN Resolution 2758. That resolution did not say that the PRC represents the people of Taiwan. In fact, that resolution didn't even mention Taiwan. So in conclusion, Washington has responded with an even stronger partnership with Taipei. Because Taipei showed the strength of truth and transparency and the importance of democracy in dealing with a global crisis, However, there has been no paradigm change in our overall policy in dealing with Taiwan. So I will stop here and thank you. Look forward to your questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Khan. I would like to kick off the question and answer session. And for the audience, um, I see there are some questions coming into the Q&A chat box. So please enter your questions there as we go. Um, so what do you think is the biggest takeaway from this COVID-19 crisis um, for each of their respective countries would be my first question. I will unmute everyone. Okay, you want me to go first, Pam? Sure. All right. Um, in answer to your question, just very briefly, uh, the Taiwan model means a better brand for Taiwan. It has gained international goodwill and stronger partnerships. Nonetheless, I think the question remains about whether Taiwan uses this window of opportunity of stronger support in the United States and other countries like Japan, Australia, New Zealand. This is a window of opportunity that's not going to be here forever and whether President Tsai will apply her leadership to other aspects of policy, including national defense and economic growth. Thank you. Dr. Matsuda, Dr. John, do you have comments? Well, um, I think that the, the most positive thing is that uh, as uh, Dr. Chan said, you know, the Taiwan has become much more, uh, um, has gained a, a kind of more solidarity, uh, I think, you know, that uh, the Taiwan has been famous for its, you know, uh, polarized 
uh, political society. But now uh, the current administration performance is very good and uh, uh, the approval rate is very high. Uh, so, the, uh, for example, China's disinformation efforts are, are not that uh, effective, uh, uh, you know, uh, eventually. So, I think that this is a very positive change. But back in Japan, I think that there are, there are very few uh, positive changes. And uh, so, um, I think that uh, in terms of the bilateral relations between Japan and Taiwan, I think that uh, we, we, we still have wait and see what will happen next. Otherwise, so far, we don't have any, you know, uh, positive uh, things, you know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, you know, this pandemic, I started from the beginning and I, I, I see it as a third world war, kind of third world war. So our common enemy is this is a, a virus. And all the countries are uh, doing a kind of uh, alliance, alignment together when uh, you need friends to uh, cooperate together to take some common measure to control the virus, to beat the virus. And through these alignments or the alliance, yeah, this um, block and block become enemy sometimes, so-called so enemy, but our common enemy is actually the virus. And based on the best models that people has predict, this pandemic will last almost in the coming four years. So we have to enter a so-called new normal. There's no way we can go back to the previous periods of uh, society or international relationship. That the virus came and, and, and gone, then we can go to the old politics. I, I don't think so. And so this, the biggest test will be this winter. Is this winter's, uh, the pandemic came again and the bigger than this one. Then I can see that a lot of uh, we just mentioned that uh, the paradigm is still there, and the paradigm has to be forced to shift out of the needs of its society. So um, I really want to see uh, to be to 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 see the possibility of uh, uh, each societies, the political elites or intellectuals, to uh, to start. Uh, dialogue with the uh, society on the possibility, the new possibility of new world orders. It's kind of like the UN system is after the World War II, right? Now, if it's the, the first world war in the 21st century, so there should be a, some kind of orders. And the wishful thinking of Taiwan is, uh, we have a WTO, World Trade Organization, that treat Taiwan as an uh, 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 economic entity, right? At the least, we have to move to the health uh, authorities that Taiwan control, Taiwan, uh, Penghu, Jinmen, and Mazu. That's uh, the, the territory that's under our health authority. That's what exercise our power to control pandemic. I think that's quite reasonable. And since this pandemic is a common language that has never appeared in previous uh, international uh, relations as dialogue. So this is a possibility that a new one, it's not against one China at all. It's just a realistic way. And or even further, if all this possibility has been uh, a corner to, to, to become uh, even impossible, then uh, actually on this issue, there should be one some kinds of a dual recognitions that there's a, that the China, they are in control all that health authority. They reported their uh, cases to WHO and we've reported ours, right? And it is good for the whole world to get the first hand information from China and from Taiwan. Both are good examples for people to learn, to share. So this dual recognition is the one thing that we are thinking should be there. And why it is possible if I, the, the reason Taiwan has come to this unity is not because the people of our age. 
It's because of young people. And young people, they have no burdens and they become so politicized, you know, very actively politically when they need it. But in peacetime, they don't care about politics. But Taiwan repeatedly, they are so energetic to, to, to change the, the way our generations uh, saw things that's divided, you know, always divided. And they are not, they are different. And I see this time in US it's coming. I think there's a kind of uh, 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 movement uh, after this uh, uh, tragic uh, scenes of the uh, George Floyd. You know, you saw that uh, uh, it, it's um, imaginably that so many uh, uh, cities have this kind of movement. And during the pandemic, you can see that uh, Americans are uh, people are quite unified. One exception is Japan. I thought Japan is so the Japanese young people are so a political. They don't care, and that's uh, so. That's uh, that's uh, I don't understand. But anyway, the young generation will move us to a new uh, uh, possibility. That the virus and uh, also the climate change. They are there. These are their common language. They care. So I, I see this as a possibility. And if these uh, pandemics last for another three or four years, I cannot believe that uh, the old framework of all world can function. You know, Director has now lost his um, uh, authority of uh, uh, dealing with the pandemic. You know, Director has from the beginning advised not to take border control to control the pandemic. But no country follows. See, so, so after this, we have to discuss if we really want to uh, control borders to control in order to control the pandemic. How do they do it? Can we negotiate bilateral or regionally? Because that ratio has no function at all to to advise us to do right. So that's a real need, and uh, and the kind of successful story of Taiwan would be a, a good way to talk about it. But more important is the vaccines. You know, we can only have the vaccines to stop the pandemic. And the, the race to develop, to procure, to manufacture. You know, I, I, I see there's a need for like Taiwan, Japan, and uh, US as a possibility to stand, sit down to, to talk about the supply chains. You know, Taiwan is very good in just in time delivers. So we supply a lot of uh, important things to uh, Japanese company and uh, US company. And how about machines? And it's coming for next uh, six to uh, six months to 12 months. And there's a need to negotiate this and uh, to, to, to change it. So I think this is a possibility of paradigm shift from some of the wishful thinking, some of reality that's and and, uh, and I see the U.S. has already had this frame, framework. I, I haven't seen anything from Japan, and uh, that's uh, worry us because uh, in the futures, which country has a machine to do to to vaccinate their populations, and which country is the first one to do that? Just like World War II, which country has uh, first is the first one to develop atomic bomb, right? <laughs> That's uh, a competition, real competition going on, and uh, which countries should be uh, aligned together to cooperate together. It's coming in these next two months, and, um, and we will see. And uh, we like to play some kind of the role, just like uh, the masks we are providing uh, to countries in need, I think, for the supply chain of a sense. It's a real issue for us. To, to, to think of a paradigm shift that needed for global health security. Thank you, Dr. Zhang. We have several questions. I'm going to um, combine them. Um, there are a few points here. Dennis Halpin asks um, about the abrupt announcement from President Trump last week that the U.S. would pull out of the WHO. What does that mean for U.S. influence um, in the post-COVID-19 or in the COVID-19 fight? Um, another question is, how do Taiwan and the U.S. see um, President Xi's visit to Japan whenever that happens? 
um, from Yoshinari Kurose at Sankei Shimbun. Um, and then a third question is, um, what are your feelings about how relations with Taiwan will change after the US election? Um, so uh, would anyone like to start with the WHO question and the US's perhaps exit? Okay, very, very briefly, we're just going to be quick so we can get through as many questions as possible. Yes. Thanks, Dennis. Um, on, on the 18th, the White House sent a presidential letter to the WHO. And I think the concerns behind the letter really have to do with the WHO having been co-opted by the Democracy of China, um, rather than being an independent international organization. And so what does this mean? Um, I think the most important part for our discussion here today is that the letter specifically praised Taiwan for having warned on the last day of 2019, very early on, about the possibility of human to human transmission. Now, US leadership is needed, but does it necessarily have to be through specific types of um, institutions that might have been co opted by China until we can see some reforms? Thank you. Um, um, uh, WHO has made a lot of mistakes and uh, it has been heavily influenced by China. Yes, that's that's correct. But uh, I think that uh, US exit uh, from uh, WHO is a, a strategic mistake, a very serious strategic mistake. And uh, if uh, US remains inside uh, WHO and try to promote more uh, reforms of uh, WHO, I think that uh, the US influence over the international community uh, can be preserved. But uh, the world uh, sees that uh, the US uh, decline uh, and uh, the newly emerged uh, China, uh, we, we, we cannot, uh, which we cannot trust. So the people say that this is a G, G zero uh, world. I agree. Um, I think that uh, the, the US should be uh, more uh, careful about uh, how to, uh, you know, formulate international, uh, uh, you know, uh, battle of order or uh, increasing more friends. Uh, and using more uh, using allies uh, to tackle with the difficult issues. Don't fight uh, China alone. So that, that's the, uh, the, the impression uh, we have. Thank you. You know, both the US and Japan deserve to play bigger roles in uh, international organization, especially in uh, WHO. And uh, it's amazed me that I don't know why uh, both countries are not playing the roles that uh, in terms of uh, ability and financial contributions, you know, that's, uh, I don't understand. So um, uh, I can understand the, the sentiments of uh, Trump's administration to do so, but it's, it's unwise, you know. The uh, it, U.S. has to uh, 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 cooperates more with European unions and uh, Japan and some of uh, these uh, developed countries and to to have a common uh, strategy to strengthen WHO, I think it's the best way. If U.S. really want to pull out, then uh, uh, it has to uh, uh, a big, big determination to uh, have new global health security mechanism or the organization to do that. And there is some uh, uh, possibility there too, because uh, if this threat, another threat come in and the ratio is still so weak, then uh, people will uh, cling to any uh, possibility they can save lives, right? So uh, that's what I observe. And so if we touch to this uh, uh, Xi Jinping's uh, visit to uh, Japan, you know, always uh, we thought that uh, from Taiwan's perspective, we don't understand why Japan, Japanese government and all Japanese society is kind of very 
um, conservative of uh, their roles internationally, you know, and uh, try to uh, very every move to us is to to careful, to to mindful for a very to us it's very uh, trivial things. Sometimes words, sometimes actions, and uh, uh, and uh, it uh, seems to us. Japanese are not uh, very uh, aware of uh, Chinese ways, so that's uh, there's uh, kind of uh, being uh, play around. So what do we think that Japan still need to uh, advocate the basic the human uh, values, human rights, you know, the values, I think that's the strongest and uh, that would be uh, better. And, uh, you know, we have a lot of economic uh, stake in China too. We have a lot of business with uh, them and still we can uh, hold on our values. And when we have this uh, dealing with China, I think that's what the, the world learned this time in a time of pandemic, you know, economical uh, uh, interest is important, but in the end, life, human life and values uh, more important than the short term that economic ends. That uh, so that uh, we hope that uh, no matter what time he visits, try to be assertive and just stand by the values. I think that would be uh, best for Japan and best for the world. If Japan is trying to uh, a, a way try to to please the Chinese to 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 look for some gains, I think that's. Uh, that's, uh, I think that's uh, cannot work very well to, to us. Hmm. Ms. Khan, very briefly, because I know we only have about a minute left, but um, do you have any insight on how relations between the U.S. and Taiwan might change after the election um, in November? Uh, I think that it is a huge question mark. Um, there's going to be a lot of continuity, nonetheless. But there could be changes depending on which uh, candidate wins. And that's why I think there could be changes no matter which candidate wins. Um, and that's why there is important support that's bipartisan for, Kong, for Taiwan today. And it remains an important window of opportunity. Thank you. Um, we are unfortunately just out of time. Thank you so much to everyone who submitted questions. I'm sorry we couldn't get to all of them, um, but it's good to know that we have generated a strong interest and I think a good discussion. Um, I will close the session here. Thank you so much to our three panelists who are joining us today. And thank you to everyone in the audience um, who joined in on the discussion. Hope we'll see you all at future Stimson East Asia program events. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>